Way back in 1983, I was, I was on the board of Avon Cosmetics and Thames Television and Barclays. I'd fairly recently joined the board of Barclays, but I'd also been three years as chair of the London Tourist Board. And it was in that capacity that I got a letter from New York one day. Ellie Guggenheimer, in fact, was writing to me. And it was all about a festival that was going to happen in the summer of 1983. And it was called Britain Salutes New York. And it was really a way of Britain expressing our admiration and respect for all the arts achievements that had happened between our two nations across the Atlantic. But Ellie Guggenheimer wrote to me at the London Tourist Board saying they were very perturbed that there didn't appear to be any role for women in this festival, that there was no particular focus on women's achievements. And as a result, she wanted me and themselves to invite eight or ten achieving women, as she put it, from the UK to visit New York for the festival and all our expenses would be covered. Well, needless to say, we immediately got together. I called Barbara because she was at the IBA at the time, another television operation, so we were in touch for that reason. And we put together a great team. We had three Catherine. politicians, the top headmistress, Heather Brigstock. We had the top Christian deacon, in the first ever woman deacon in the Church of England. And we also had the three of us here, Barbara, myself, and Catherine, who was at the time a very significant and still is journalist. So if I can pick up the yeah. story, when we arrived, we met all these uh, very warm and friendly American women. And uh, it was like being in a movie. The first thing they did was to take us to breakfast at Tiffany's. Yeah. And we had the whole of Tiffany's to ourselves and uh, we were honoured guests and uh, it was wonderful. Then we went to their various apartments and uh, we each had to sing for our supper, which we did. And Catherine spoke brilliantly and Mary spoke brilliantly and I spoke reasonably well. Brilliantly, brilliantly. And we... Uh, we had a week which was unforgettable. Then, coming back, I will just mention that we, Mary and I, and our other distinguished friends were travelling steerage on the plane, but Catherine was travelling first class because she was a star journalist for The Observer and she had first class travel. So she came down to steerage with drinks in her hands to give to us as we were travelling. And when we came back, we thought we'll start something like that. It's a wonderful group. We have been so impressed. And so we had to start something in London. And I thought, we won't believe in ourselves unless we see it in the press. So I rang uh, the Financial Times. They had a diary column then called Men and Matters. Misogynist? Yes. But don't forget this was 35 years ago. Men and Matters. So I rang the editor and I told him about our trip and what we were going to do. He said, well, Barbara, you better write the piece and then I'll put it in. <laughs> Thank you. And so I wrote this piece for the Financial Times with Catherine's name, Mary's name, my name, and others, what we were going to do. So then when I told them all next day, read the Financial Times, where we've arrived, where it... And we decided we would have no standing order no constitution, no rules, and no fees. And that's how we started. We achieved it by meeting every time we met for dinner in each other's boardrooms. <laughs> so therefore, no need for expenses, and no need for any annual subscription. And for speakers, where do we look among our members? Yeah. And our rules, which were very, very simple. One rule was that you um, kept what you said within the room okay. and everyone felt free to mm -hmm. talk about anything. Confidentiality. Yes, mm -hmm. confidentiality. We called ourselves Forum Dinners. Dinners. Forum Dinners. Forum Dinners. Still got the writing paper that says Forum Dinners across the top and our four names across the bottom. Uh -huh. The first dinner we held in that September 1983 
was in my boardroom, Thames Television, and we had about 15 of us. Yes. Ros was invited, Ros Gilmore was invited but couldn't make it, Carmen Khalil was invited but couldn't make it. We had a very distinguished group. The next dinner, you ended up. I, I uh, hosted that at the IBA, beautiful big conference room, unlimited canopies of champagne and whatever you wanted. As long as I did a small speech about the IBA, which of course I did with pleasure. A very important body. I've still got the list of the members who came to that second dinner. How and many of them, I mean, it was a really distinguished oh. crowd and lots are still, Strong. lots are still with us. There's Catherine's yeah. name. Ah. Dame Margaret Booth, the top judge at the time. Carmen Khalil, who was setting up Virago. Janet Cohen at Charterhouse, she's still with us. Jean Denton, of course, was there right from the start as managing director of Heron Drive and a governor of the LSE. Around at the end of 1988, we began to feel that forum, forum dinners, as we still called ourselves, deserved to be on a bigger platform and playing its part in a bigger world. And we decided that it was time for something a bigger. child really to be born of us a sort yes. of that we could godparent this new baby yes and we wanted Jean Denton to take it on board uh -huh. and we decided then also that we needed to gift the name forum on to Jean Denton to start the new group and that we talked for a long time it seemed to matter to us what we were going to call ourselves and we ended up calling ourselves Lynx spelt in capitals, L-I-N-K-S, but also because it had the parallel with the female cat, the L-Y-N-X, which we thought was quite a powerful and vivid image, though I think that may have gone by the board now. I remember Jean first sent me a proposal on the 17th, no, I sent out a proposal to Jean in January 1989, so it must have been just after then, talking about our phone calls, and the fact that we needed to pursue it and that we would now ask Jean to pursue it and it would be funded by subscriptions which would cover Jean's cost and also that all our present membership would be offered one free year's membership whether or not we fulfilled Jean's criteria. We were going to have a meeting in Paris, the International Women's mm. Forum were meeting in Paris very mm. shortly and we thought that would be a good time to finalise the proposals. And Jean put forward very detailed proposals, which I've actually given you a copy of, which I've left, I'll leave here for you, Susan, um, yeah. making the proposition, and I said, you need to call it Forum, Forum UK. Forum she was UK. suggesting Women's Forum. I said, no, you call it Forum UK, and you are a member of the international group, because that is one of the huge benefits that you will gain through this. And it continued, and it built up with Jean into something that was really very exciting and the aspect of it that I enjoyed most was the breakfast at the Ritz and the breakfast there not only were good breakfasts but you sat around and you talked to some really interesting people. It's one of the integral parts if you're a member you must take part in the international events and so to have been in New Orleans to have been in Alabama to have been in Montreal to have been in Jerusalem are moments and also doors open for the International Women's Forum that do not open for anyone else. Mm. And, uh, and you should be aware that we have uh, some very big hitters indeed among our membership. And uh, so if you're lucky enough uh, to get on one of these events, go for it. From the very beginning it was so nice because you were not being pushed around by bloody men. It was the feeling, it was just simply that, you know, our, our lot were, were getting on better than ever yes. before. And I very much enjoyed the various things. Um, and probably there would be other things in journalism that I wouldn't have had. So the time I had with IDA, uh, IWF was great, but for me, the real pleasure and excitement has been with the early forum dinners and with our continuing relationship with Lynx. For me, it means always something interesting. 
sometimes exciting, and always a source of pride. I look at the membership, I see the happy faces and the relationships between them. I see how important they are, how senior they are in their careers, and I think I started this. Mm -hmm.